Hello, hello there, my crafty friends. It's Candy here from SweetStamper.com, and this is the first of a week of Facebook Lives. So I'm really excited to be with you today. I just was needing to get this on camera.com. Um, I have some fun things for you tonight. You can see I'm back at Lucky Clover. You know, y'all are going to get sick of this, but I'm going to convince you that you need to have this stamp set. I think this will be the third, maybe the third Facebook Live that I'm featuring Lucky Clover. This is actually on my blog today. My blog is sweetstamper.com. And I just wanted to do one more project with this before I tuck it away. The rest of the week, I'm going to be doing some other things. And I do have a host code with you. So hello, Margaret. Welcome, welcome. I do have a host code for you. And that means that when you place an order with my host code, you're going to get gifts. And I will have it uh, by the well, I think we're going to be doing it on Friday. I have a virtual card class for you, so I will have a packet of projects that you can do uh, when you shop with my host code. And that just says shopwithcandy.com. And there is my host code so that if you want the free card packs for the virtual card class, they will be shipping out for you next week. Actually, the same projects that my in-person card class is doing on Saturday. Hello, hello. Uh, Linda is here, and hello, Karen from Iowa. I bet it's a lot colder where you are. I had to go downstairs and get a t-shirt on. It was so warm up here. I, I, have, I had a big, thick fleece hoodie on all day, and even though it's quite mild outside, it was fairly cool in the house, and I came upstairs to to get ready for Facebook Live. I thought, ah, oh, this is not going to work. I, I'm, I need to be cooler. So Marsha is, welcome, welcome, Marsha, from Texas. And thank you, Margaret, for sharing. And hello, Corinne has already shared. Thank you, ladies. So just as a recap, every single Facebook Live, I do a giveaway. So that is based on when you put in the comments that you've shared, then you will go into the drawing for that particular day's um freebie giveaway and I, I give good giveaways they run everything from stamp and blends to uh, embellishments to stamp sets to uh, six by six paper lots of goodies so I do like to reward you uh, for hanging out with me here and supporting me here I appreciate it so much okay let's get into tonight's projects as you can see I'm featuring lucky clover once again let me just go over with you because we're going to be using vellum with it tonight. So this is a set of four note cards that is um, my Clover class, my Lucky Clover class. They're making two each of these cards. Now, this punch uh, unfortunately sold out very quickly when this bundle went live, but that's okay because I'm going to show you lots of ways to use the stamp set without the punch, and that's really what I've been keyed in on. Last time we were together, last Thursday, I did these two cards using the same supplies. And I did go back because I, I was really messy on this. I went back and re-stamped that. Um, and hey, Simone, I'm glad you're here. This is where we're going to go tonight. So we are going to use some vellum. This card is actually on my blog today. And I really was, I thought this was kind of fun. I like it when everything has a real cohesive look or a cohesive fit, it has to make sense in my mind. And so a good friend is like a four leaf clover, hard to find. So I'm using maps on here. And I really love this vellum. I do like to show you things that you may have overlooked. And I think this layering designs is in the annual catalog. And let me show you why I like it so much and why I wanted to use both the white and the black print. So you get two sheets of the black printed vellum with the um, maps. Then you get two with this scripty font. And this is fun because you can go in either direction because you've got some going one way, some going the other. I think I must have used my other piece out of there. Then you get two that are more like, um, like an encyclopedia or a dictionary. 
And then you get the same thing in white. So it has a much softer feel with the white. So I wanted to feature this tonight with my Lucky Clover stamp set because like I said, it fits the map and hard to find kind of works in my brain at least. And um, I wanted to give you some tips on sticking down vellum effectively uh, where your adhesive doesn't show. And I wanted to also show you another card. We're gonna do this in a different color because you know how I like to change things up. And I wanted to show you uh, this other card I had done with the vellum. So again, kind of thinking about the way things fit together. The owl is a wise owl. And I've got my dictionary print right here. So this is adhering the, um, the black um, dictionary print on a piece of smoky slate. And this is with the adorable owl which is free during celebration. So just another idea. I know there's another vellum, printed vellum in the new mini catalog, and it is pretty. This is the one I think is super, um, super versatile because you can make really good masculine cards with this. And, uh, and also you can glam it up and make it, you know, real, real pretty. So let's see what we're gonna do tonight. We're gonna kind of change gears and we're gonna make this card, but I'm gonna make it, this is actually done with Granny Apple Green here, Parakeet Party here, and Garden Green here. I'm gonna turn the tables. We'll see how this turns out because this is only in my head so far. <laughs> I'm going to use uh, actually Tranquil Tide, not Tranquil Tide, Tahitian Tide, and um, Pacific Point. So let's see where we can get with that. But before we do that, let's get a little bit of lessons, as it were, and how, how to adhere vellum and how not to adhere vellum. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have a couple of little scraps here to show you what not to do with vellum. So the, the issue with vellum is that typically your adhesive is going to show through. So when you put your adhesive down, even when you use just a little bit, by golly, it just shows through. And so you get this kind of dark, you can see exactly where my adhesive is. So I don't like that, it's unsightly. So my next, um, my next thing I can do is to use the liquid glue. Now, if I'm gonna use the liquid glue, I have to use it really, really lightly, or it's also gonna show through. So in order to do that, I can smear it with one of these. This is what you don't want to do. Ask me how I know. This, this glue will disintegrate this, this sponge. These are our sponge daubers. These are for applying ink. They are not for applying liquid glue. Now, if you happen to have one of these old Stampin' Up! sponges that we used to carry, this is a totally different um, material. And you can use this and it will not fall apart on you. So I'm just gonna use a tiny, tiny bit of liquid glue here. And then I'm going to smear it really thin. And then when I put my vellum on there, you know, voila, it, it's actually sometimes will still show through. I mean, that's even really, really lightly adhered or lightly, I, I'd only put a tiny bit on there. It's still showing through. So what is a stamper to do? Well, I have a new way to do this that I'm absolutely I'm just in love with. So I'm gonna use adhesive sheets. And this is a dry adhesive, comes like this. And we typically think of this with the Big Boss, with our stamp and cut and emboss machine, because we typically use this to put on the back of cardstock or, or designer paper and run it through uh, particularly the fine dyes, because then it becomes, everything that you put this on becomes a sticker. Well, I'm gonna do that with the vellum and show you a little bit of magic. So when you, I've already cut this, because I'm gonna put it on here, and I will say, I like these vellum prints on, on lighter colors of paper. When you put it on darker paper, I don't know, it just kind of gets lost in the shuffle to me. It looks kind of like a frosted glass and you kind of miss the pattern. So um, 
Let me stop just a minute because there's been a little bit of chatter here. And Cheryl, welcome, welcome from California. I think you're a newcomer. So we are super happy to have you here. And Thelma, welcome, welcome. Barbara Ann, that is Barb Jones. And Cynthia Campbell, I haven't seen you in a while. Welcome. Now, Corinne, you like to use the glue dots. And that you are right. The glue dots, the small ones from the paper pumpkin kit, will work. But I find even those... Um, I have to use, I have to like put something over it. So what I, you know, would typically do is, you know, put something over this to hide it. But I want to show you a way to do it where you don't even have to do that. It's not, you don't need any hiding. So when you, I, I've already cut this to five and a quarter by four. And when you pull these little pieces off, you're going to see it's super, super sticky under there. And I love this because it enables you to take that off really easily, like so. And you do want to move kind of slow or it'll kind of start to bunch up on you, which you don't want to do. And then I'm going to go all the way over like so. Now, I think you could do this directly on the cardstock, but that's not the way I did it on my sample, so I feel like I probably, well, you know what? Let's live dangerously. Let's try it. Let me think. No, let's do it the way I did it originally. Okay, so I want to make sure that my pattern is right side up, and it is, and I'm just going to put it right along here, and it is going to grab it and stick it. And I mean, it is really stuck down. The other thing I like about this is there are no edges coming up. And a lot of times we're trying to work in such a way that we're hiding, you know, the uh, adhesive. And so we sometimes end up with some edges. And I did not want that. I want the whole thing to just be stuck like so. Now, I am going to take the other side and now I'm going to peel this back because I have effectively created a big giant sticker. Well, that's not what I meant to do. Here we go. <laughs> okay, let's see. Here we go. So this is my favorite way to lift the edge once I get it stuck. And now I have all of this awesome stickiness on here. And I have a giant vellum sticker. Look at that. And you can see why I'm moving slowly because I don't want to rip the, it wouldn't rip the paper, but it might cause the, the um, what do you call it, the adhesive to like, kind of like go into strands, and I don't want that. So now I'm going to put this right over here, like so, and voila, my, my vellum is perfectly flat. It's not coming up. It's like stuck down, no edges flapping. It's super, super neat and tidy. And that was what I was wanting. Now, I have left a little bit of an edge there, which I didn't really mean to, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. Well, you know what? I better cut that off. Because it will bother me. <laughs> that is going to bother me. A little bit more. Okay, now, now I have just vellum on here. Now, here is, again, this is my original that I'm copying today. And where's my owl card? Here's my owl card using just one piece of the vellum. This is, I'm using two for this card today. And I'm redoing this into with some different colors. So, Pause for a minute. So, Karen, you're having a big snowstorm moving in. Wow. <laughs> that is that is wild. I cannot even imagine. Okay, just making sure I haven't missed anybody. 
So I hope you will enjoy, you know, experiment with that a little bit before I move into making the rest of this card. I did have, a, oh, I know what I was gonna show you. So I had another little piece of cardstock. So I have just a little scrap of cardstock here. Sometimes you'll end up with little pieces like this left over from your, um, from your, you know, your offcuts from using the adhesive sheet. Hey, Yolanda, welcome. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do like so. And then what's nice is when you have these little tiny punches like this, I mean, these are a nightmare to try to adhere, to be fair. <laughs> just saying. So now I have a couple of stars and these have adhesive sheet on the back. So all I have to do is grab that off of there. I don't have to worry about glue seeping out, you know. You know how sometimes the liquid glue or the um, fine tip glue is going to, you know, kind of splodge everywhere and leave behind some, you know, it just looks tacky, I think. I don't know, left glue seeping out the edges is one of my pet peeves. So now... I've effectively made a sticker. And there's a little tiny, oh, look at this little tiny, tiny star here. I mean, it's almost microscopic. Well, not quite, but it's tiny. I mean, you couldn't put a glue dot on that, glue dot, ah, glue dot on that or anything. So look at that with that adhesive sheet. It's just gonna go down perfectly. So I can't remember, you know, I should have looked at that before I started, but um, I didn't, say la vie. This, these adhesive sheets, they're super affordable. You get 12 sheets and they're 12 by six. So this will go a long way and it's just a really affordable, very neat, tidy way to create your own stickers like this or just to be able to take your small, tiny punches and dies and adhere them really neatly and also to be able to adhere your um, vellum. So now I have my pieces of vellum here attached to a piece of Tahitian Tide. I am going to put a little bit of Tahitian Tide ribbon. I do like these in color ribbons this year. And then we're going to kind of, we're even going to change up the greetings. So my original is about a good friend and kind of, it's hard to find. So tying in with my map, this time I'm going to do a good luck. I'm thinking about, you know, somebody who's going to move and good luck is a good one to have. Or if somebody's going on a big trip or something, um, that would be something that would be. But a lot of times people are moving, they're getting orders, you know, with the military or they're moving with their job. And this is a great way to wish them luck when they're moving. Now. I have a couple of options. So here I put Parakeet Party on um, Granny Apple Green. You know what? Before I figure out the card base, maybe we should do the stamping. So my original thought was just to put Tahitian, Tahitian, yeah, Tahitian Tide on Tahitian Tide. So that looks nice, but I could uh, change it up a little bit. I could go with, um, I could put this on Pacific point and that really deepens it really changes the mood as it were I could also attach it to white which really brightens it and really brings out the white map so let's think about those and while we're thinking about those I've gone ahead and cut out one of these this is the layering diorama these are super fun if you don't have these this is a $29 set of dies very affordable when you look at how many shit, how many sizes you get, these really large ones I think would be great for scrapbooking. Um, of course, you can actually, I say of course, I think this big one fits on a card front. Let's see. Just barely. But yeah, these, these are fun to use. They, they're great with anything, with nature, with animals, birds. Yeah. And my map card. So what I want to do is I'm going to stamp in Night of Navy ink on to Pacific Point. And I'm going to have some shamrocks kind of going like this. I really like this stamp, this spray of shamrocks. And 
And then I'm going to put a good luck here. You know, this would be great for a kid going off to college. So many things that you could do with this. And I could angle it a little bit. No, I think I'm going to do it like this. There's my good luck. Now, that is ready to go on here. And this, again, you could use this for a guy. The guys are harder to, to design for, frankly. Um, but I think this is a very gender neutral card. I could send this to a guy. I could send this to a girl. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pop this down with, um, with uh, dimensionals. I think before I do that... Put a few more shamrocks on there. There's a little bit too much kind of blank space there for my eye. So where'd my name? Here we go. Oh, I like that, Corinne. The, the Pacific Point could be water for a ship. Yeah, this would be a great, that, this would be a great one for somebody going on a cruise, somebody going on a big trip, somebody in the Navy. I like that idea a lot. Well, let's just go ahead and do them over here too. <laughs> we'll just do shamrocks everywhere. Okay, there we go. I kind of like that. I'm kind of digging it. Now, it's still pretty simple stamping, you know. Um, we're just kind of glamoring everything up with that. I think the, the vellum designs paper makes a huge difference. So, um, dimensionals, here we go. I think it's something that you want to add to your crafty collection. I think you'll use it a lot. And again, especially for the guys who can be a little bit, a little bit challenging. And I have two sons, only one daughter, and I have a husband. So, you know, you got guys that you're designing for. And then I have, you know, guy friends, guys in our church, volunteers. Okay, now we're going to do a little bit more to this. But before we do that, let's think about where we're going to land here. So, we can go with the white. I'm open to, um, I love it when you vote. So there's the white. Um, I can do it on Pacific Point. Bring, really brings out that deep blue. Or I can do it tone on tone and put it on the Tahitian Tide. So I'm gonna take a little, uh, we're gonna take a little meander while you're kind of voting on that. And I'll put these over here. And put this here so you can think about that. And I, I don't know if this is going to work or not because, you know, I come on here with a few ideas and then we stamp together, we play together, we have fun together. So I think I want to create a shamrock and I'm going to actually fussy cut this shamrock and that just means I'm going to cut it out. And I wondered, well, which blue should I use here? So I went to my trusty color coach and these are the ones that Stampin' Up! provides for us. And this is the set of in colors. And I went to Tahitian Tide. Well, I've got three greens to choose from. They're going to go well with the main color here. So I'm going to actually try Shaded Spruce Ink on a Pear Pizzazz cardstock to create a little 3D shamrock. And we're going to see how we get on. So let's see. While people are voting, I'm going to create a shamrock. And I, I thought that white would be too kind of bright. And I wanted to kind of maximize the green. Um, I had shared with you last time we were together, which was last Thursday, that shamrocks, uh, the four the four leaf clover is actually quite rare. And that's why it's considered lucky. Most clovers are either well, three is the most common. Uh, three, I think it's called a trifoliate. I don't know if they're lobes or what. But most sh uh, shamrocks, most clovers, I think truly a shamrock might be a four-leaf clover. But most clover plants, and there's hundreds of varieties, are either single, double, or triple. So this four-leaf is quite rare, and that's why it's associated with good luck. So that's not too bad. Cutting that little guy out. Now, whether this is going to work on here or not, oh, I think that might be a nice little pop of color. Might be just the ticket to kind of brighten things up a little bit. Okay, let's see. Now, I think we have a lot of votes for Pacific Point. Oh, Pacific Point it is. 
Yes, Crystal, good for graduates, moving to college, a new city for a job, internship. Yeah, I love it. Lots of great ideas. Okay, the votes are in and we are going to go with Pacific Point. So let's put those aside. I do love kind of doing this on camera because I hope you do it at home. And that is to kind of compare what do you think is going to be the best card base. Sometimes just one, changing one layer, changing the bottom, you know, the, the base card base can make such a big difference. Now, you do want to make sure you're going, Yeah, you know, how many times have I put that on upside down? Probably the same number of times as you have. <laughs> so that is going to go there. And now I'm going to do just that little pop of color. What do we think? You know, maybe I should do it in white. Maybe that would be better. Let me grab a white scrap. I was afraid the white would be too bright, but I think that's a little bit dull. So let's see. I think that if we're going to do this, it needs to really stand out. So let's just try it. It only takes a couple of seconds to... Oh, yeah, I think that's going to be better. A little pop of color there. And then I don't even think... I mean, I can add a knot here. I don't think I really even need it. I think I'm just going to leave that there. I like it. And where'd my scissors go? Here we go. Paper snips. So if you don't have paper snips, you need paper snips. You probably need a couple of pairs of paper snips if you're like me and you leave them in one bag or at one workstation and then you put a pair on your desk. And yeah, that's kind of the way I run. But I will say these paper snips... I think they're still $10. Best $10 you will spend in the catalog. I'm telling you, they will last you for years. Now, some people do sharpen them. I think you must have to use them for a long time before you have to sharpen them. I have sh I have paper snips I've had for a lot of years, and I've never sharpened them, never had the need to. So, I don't know. Maybe, I, maybe I'm just doing mine differently. I don't know. I, I will say I don't use the same paper snips for for fabric and paper. Ah, uh, yes, look at there. There we go. There's my little shamrock. So I'm gonna pop that up on a dimensional as well. And I will, what do you think? Here's my remake, there's my original, and there's my remake. So whether you do it, I mean, I wanted to do in two different sets of greetings, just to give it more, you know, give you one more way of looking at it. But I think that we did a good color change. I like the blue. I like the green. Um, the friend and the good luck. I think they both work. And um, I think that, again, I, I think everybody should have this stamp set. I have, there is a great Happy St. Patrick's Day. And you could easily put this, that on the inside here. But I think that there's just so much on here to uh, that are very classic images that you're going to use again and again. And that's, you know, if you've been around here much at all, you know, I really like kind of champion versatility uh, because I want my stamps to really work for me. I want them to do more than one thing for me. And, of course, I can't find my... My little minis so I'm just gonna you know before we had mini dimensionals we just used to cut the edges so that's what I'm gonna do on this little guy now I do think I'm gonna add something maybe just a little something maybe just a little pop of gold to my shamrock these milky dots are what was included for my uh, stamp club members this month and they're really fun to use these are mango melody but they're kind of they they're just kind of a golden color, and I think that is going to work great right in the center. Again, luck gold is going to give just that little bit of shine, still keeping it with a masculine feel. And then there is my other one, which honestly, I mean, I would give this to, I would, I would give this to a guy. Um, that little bow there, you could make it into a knot if you wanted to, or I think it's okay. Okay, so Corinne likes the blue. And, oh, Karen likes the blue. Okay, so we have fans of the blue. It is fun to see the 70s 
same, I, I love to take something and just remake it in a different set of colors. Um, hey, Carol from Texas, welcome, welcome. I'm in San Antonio, so I'm a fellow Texan. Yeah, Karen, your rib, your uh, the snip, snips you use for ribbons have ribbons on them. Exactly, that's the way you can keep them apart. Tell them apart. Well, that is my Facebook Live t for tonight. So we talked about some new ways to attach vellum using the adhesive sheets. Who would have thought? I, I think I really am liking this. And um, we were looking at the vellum layering designs, which gives you the um, book print, gives you the maps, and you get the book print in black and white, gives you the maps in black and white, and also gives you a really pretty scripty one, so that if you want to go more elegant. So I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of versatility in that. So, um, Yay, yay, Karen. Thank you very much for the kudos. I appreciate it. And just to remind you that when you share my video, you will go into the drawing. Now, I typically, because I'm typically on here once a week on a Thursday, and this week I'm on here Monday through Friday, every day, not always at 7. 7 is my preferred time to be here, but a couple of times I have 7 o'clock meetings, so I'm having to come on at like, I don't know, 2 o'clock or 4 o'clock during the day. I kind of had to vary it because I've got a packed week. But I wanted to do this. You know, we're in the celebration period when you can earn, like this little guy, you can earn this stamp set for free right now. And I was gone the first two weeks of January when this all went live because I was in the UK welcoming my newest grandbaby. So I do have a host code here so that you can uh, place an order. You can uh, place a $50 order and get this stamp set for free or a host of other things for free. Um, I will also send you with your host code order. You will get uh, a little package in the mail from me. And this week, it is going to be a set of projects. We will be doing a virtual card class on Friday. And that is the, that is the gift that you will get. And, uh, and then you also will get the PDF tutorials that go with those projects. So, lots of fun when you place an order with me, and you can just go to shopwithcandy.com, and this is the host code that will attach to the uh, virtual projects, virtual card class projects for this week. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Don't forget to share, and uh, we will, I think we might just do the drawings all, we might save them all for Monday, but I'll talk to Jennifer. She's my admin and my huge help, and we'll figure out how we're going to do the drawings for this week because I want people to have a chance and a lot of you join me live and then there's probably just as many that end up joining on the replay. So make sure that you share and put shared in the comments so we know to put you in the drawing. I will be back here tomorrow, I think at four o'clock. <laughs> Is it at four o'clock or two o'clock? I can't even remember looking at my own graphic. I've got a busy day tomorrow. Um, but I'm either going to be here at two o'clock or four o'clock tomorrow and I have my team meeting tomorrow night. And that's going to be super fun. So um, in the meantime, thank you so much for being here. Take care and God bless.